Okay, so in the last video, we talked about how you calculate a k-value or how you calculate equilibrium concentrations or pressures given a k-value and some initial conditions. Uh, there's something else we can calculate for a reaction and that is called Q, the reaction quotient. Now you've already seen this a couple of times and you saw it in electrochemistry. Um, and we know that in general Q is the ratio of products to reactants. But so is K. K is a ratio of products to reactants. So what is the difference between K and Q? Well, K, oops, pen. In general, K is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. And again, this is the general equation that we've dealt with before. And since this is concentrations, this would be a Kc. Q looks just like K. So Q, in terms of how I write it, looks exactly the same as K. It's the concentration of C times the concentration of D over the concentration of A times the concentration of B. Okay. So if you look at them, that doesn't look like there's any difference. But there is a difference when we start looking at the chemistry behind this. If I have a K value, that means the system is at equilibrium. So I know I have a set of equilibrium conditions. The rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. I am not seeing any changes in concentration. Q is any set of conditions. So Q, when we're uh, calculating the reaction quotient, or the Q value, we want to know, is the system at equilibrium? So even though Q technically stands for quotient, because we're looking at a ratio, when we ta start talking about Q in terms of equilibrium, we can think of Q as standing for asking the question, is the system at equilibrium? So in order to do that, we compare the Q value for the set of conditions we're given to the K value for that reaction when it is actually at equilibrium. So there are actually four, or technically, I guess, four, technically four, but actually five different sets of conditions. Okay. If we have no products and we only have reactants, then Q is equal to zero. So we know that we're going to have to form some products to get to equilibrium, because we cannot have an equilibrium system if we do not have some quantity of products. And that's also true for reactants. If I only had products in an equilibrium system, even though technically dividing by zero is not a legal function, if I have no reactants, then the system is going to shift to form more reactants. So if I have a zero on either the reactant or the product side, the system is going to produce either more reactants or more products. So in this case, K is equal to zero. If Q is equal to zero, I have only reactants, no products. So products are going to have to form in order to get to equilibrium. Now, if I do have some products and some reactants, then I look at, I'm going to have a value of Q that is greater than zero. So if Q is less than K, which is what this is, all that's saying is that in my Q, in my quotient, there's lots of reactants and not as many products. So in order to get this Q value, to be the same as that K value, I'm going to have to make some products get rid of some reactants, which means that my reaction is going to shift to the product side to form more products. If Q is greater than K, so my actual set, oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. If Q is equal to K, then that means the system is at equilibrium. So, Q equal to K, system is at equilibrium, so the numbers are the same. If Q is greater than K, that means in my Q expression, when I plug the concentrations in, 
The numerator was too big. The denominator was too small. Some combination of those two things. So in order to get Q to be equal to K, so in order to get these two to be the same, I have to actually produce some reactants, get rid of some products to get to equilibrium. So that reaction would shift to the reactant side. So let's take a look at an example of a Q problem. Okay. So here's an equilibrium system. This is gases. The K, these are all gases. So this would actually be a KP. And the K value for this particular equilibrium system is 0.79. In this question, I'm given a set of gas pressures. And I want to know, is that set of pressures an equilibrium set of pressures or not? And you can see there is the question, is the system at equilibrium? If it is not an equilibrium combination of pressures, I want to know which direction will it shift. Will I end up having to produce more reactants or produce more products to get to equilibrium? So the first thing to do is to write the Q expression. So Q equals the pressure of Cl2 squared times the pressure of H2O gas squared divided by the pressure of HCl gas to the fourth times the pressure of O2 gas. So that would be my Q expression. If I were going to write the K expression for this, it would look exactly the same. It would be equal to K, and the numbers that I would plug into here, these four pressures, when I square them or, and do all my division and all my math, have to equal 0.79. So that's what I'm really trying to figure out right now. Does this set of pressures that's in this problem, when I put them in, does it equal 0.79 or not? So let's put them in. So that would be equal to 0.20 squared, because that's the pressure of Cl2, times 0.35 squared, because that's the pressure of H2O, divided by the pressure of HCl, which is 0.30, that's going to be to the fourth power, times the pressure of O2, which is 0.15. So if I take these numbers and put them in my calculator, I get 4.0. So that is not at equilibrium because 4.0 does not equal 0.79. So not at equilibrium. So now I need to figure out Will I get more reactants? Will there be more reactants or will there be more products when I get to equilibrium? Since 4 is greater than 0.79, that means the Q has a larger numerator than it should have to be at equilibrium and a smaller denominator than it should have to be at equilibrium. So that means that I want to make the numerator smaller, the denominator bigger, since the numerator is products and the denominator is reactants, then the reaction will shift to the react product side, the reactant side. Reaction will shift to the reactant side. Which, another way to say that is the reaction will shift left because the reactants are always on the left side. So the reaction will shift left in order to achieve an equilibrium system. 